monitor a little more so we can see you. Currently, we don't quite see you. Is that better? A little lower. Yeah, that's nice. Yes, oh, that's perfect. So perfect. Perfect. You've lost a lot of weight, Fatima. Yeah, I have. I can see your treadmill at the back. So you've been working <laughs> out, I can see. Very nice. Maybe you can give us some tips. Oh, no, I have not used it for some time. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll just wait for a few moments till uh, the rest come in. Uh, we have quite a few people coming in slowly. Sophia, can you hear the music? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, wonderful to see everyone coming in. That's awesome. We have Mary. I think Mary is here for the first time. We have Carl. Carl is also here for the first time and we have our gorgeous Sabrina who's looking beautiful as ever. We have Fatima of course who was our early bird of the evening and Merle is here as well. Hello everyone. So nice to see you all. We also have Sophia, um, my co-founder on Circle of Grey who is Sophia, all the way from Portugal. Sophia, if you can put your... Hello. Video. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> so lovely nice to see you all. all. We have Ida who's joined us. And we also have Beverly who's come in. Oh, everyone's looking very Japanese today. Hi, Beverly. Hi. <laughs> nice to see you. I have a quick question for all of you before we begin. Have you all packed your bags? Megan, I um, mean, uh, sorry, Maria, I called you Megan as my daughter. <laughs> sorry. Uh, could, could you turn down the music a little lower so we can hear you? Yeah, I have. Yeah. Is it better? Uh, better, better. So has everyone packed? Uh, Sophia will be issuing all your boarding passes very soon. Yeah, everyone excited? Very excited. That's good. That's Has good. anyone actually been to Japan before? No. No. Okay. Always and on my bucket list. Oh, <laughs> nice. It's a lovely one to have on your bucket list. Yeah. And it's really growing in popularity. Yes, it is. Okay, lovely. We have Caroline who is also joining us. Lots of new faces today. That's so nice. Mary, where are you from? I think your audio is off. If you can just unmute. I am from Bosco. Oh, oh lovely to have you on. I am I'm also a member of the Memory Cafe. Oh, lovely. Nice. Yeah, I know JC also, Jacinta. I see. Nice. So I'm so happy that you could make it. Very nice. Thank you. And... Uh, I think Carl has gotten bumped off and Caroline is still joining. We'll give it another two minutes and then we'll get started. In the meantime, if I can ask all of you to just grab a, a pen or a felt pen, if you have a black one, that would be great. If you don't, even a pencil is fine and a sheet, uh, a sheet of paper. So if you can keep that by your side. Thank you. 
So, uh, Mary, I don't suppose you are on the Facebook group, right? No, I'm not. I'm not. not okay, yet. so we'd love to uh, so invite you yeah, to the Facebook group as well. Uh, just since you're new, um, just to take you through the Circle of Grey, uh, we okay. have a lot of exciting posts that we put out every single day on the Facebook group. Uh, it's a private group. So nothing that's on the group is seen by, you know, your contact list or other people on Facebook. It's only for Circle of Grey members. And it's a really fun space to kind of interact and meet lovely people. As you will see today, uh, everyone else, all our amigos from Circle of Grey. So, um, yeah, so we'd love to have you there. Uh, I will put, if you can maybe, uh, do you know how to get onto the chat? the zoom chat zoom chat here yeah. on the more if you can put yes. your uh, phone number there i will get in touch with you and send you the facebook link okay okay oh we have yeah. eva who's coming we have jennifer who's coming we have belinda who's here oh so nice to see all of you after a long time Okay, I think we can get started. So for those who have just joined us, if you can grab um, a pen and a sheet of paper, that will be lovely. And on that note, let's get started. Okay, so um, like I said, quickly to introduce my wonderful co-founder, Sophia, who's here. Um, we're so happy to bring this to you, but uh, we'd like to all ask all of you to begin. Just close your eyes for one moment. And since we're doing a travel show today, we'd like you to travel back in time. So we'd like you to go back in time and think of any really happy memory, maybe perhaps your happiest memory and lock that in your mind. Okay. And on that note, now, if you can share it with us, you if you can tell us not the memory, but what the memory is, where the memory is from. Is it from your childhood, from school? You know, where is that happy memory from? Who would like to go first? My childhood. Your childhood. Lovely, Lovely. Eva. <laughs> what about you, Merle? Um, almost some years ago, uh, with my kid, uh, I took one of my sons and we went to Singapore to Universal Studios. Wow. That's the most happiest place. <laughs> it was so superb. Fantastic. I enjoyed the, the live music that they played just as we entered the Universal Studios, there was a live uh, group just outside on the road playing with all white. It was, it was just superb. Fantastic. So as you can see, for you, your happy memories come from travel. What about you, Sabrina? Where is your happy memory from? My happy happiest memory on um, is definitely childhood and with my mom at home and all that. But, but let me oh. tell you something. Um, 10 years back, we went to Brazil and, uh, you know, that Christ, yes. the yeah, huge Christ statue King in Brazil, King. right? The in top there. Yeah. So we celebrated my, um, husband's 60th birthday there. And there was this whole surprise for the whole family. We went, we all went there. Uh, there was a mob show. A surprise Ooh. for him okay. that uh, one of our cousins who are in Brazil had uh, organized for my husband. And then we all danced and it was so much of fun. And then the very next day, when we looked at the TV, all of us were there because he worked in that, you know, for an uh, agency and put it there. And they it was like a clip that we were looking and we were all shocked. 
I'm so happy to be part of it, everything in Brazil. Lovely. Very Rise up for the Christ. Right wow. up there. That's spectacular. What a it. fantastic 60th. Yeah, beautiful. Would anyone else like to share where their memory is from? Either the memory or where it is from. Mary, Fatima, Eva. Mine is my... Uh, Beverly. Uh, sorry, I, I put it on mute. Yeah, sorry. Uh, should I uh, say? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, so I... Uh, there's this moment when we went in Switzerland, uh, in those road, road air um, lifts that mm -hmm. take you from one place to Jungfrau, the mountain. And um, when we were passing through, we could hear these mm -hmm. bells, you know. And they were so melodious. And we kept thinking they're church bells. And uh, my husband, myself, and my son, we, like, we were looking for the churches, but we couldn't see. And they were, oh, they were fields and the cows. And, you know, that particular Swiss bell, they all had those bells. Mm -hmm. And the sound that the bells make across <laughs> that whole valley is so amazing. It is so amazing. So we always, it's a beautiful memory. Yes, oh, lovely. Sure. That's lovely to hear. Thank you for sharing. Mary, what about you? Mine go back to my post-school days when I was playing. Uh, so traveling and playing. My sport, I used to play hockey for the state, you know. So those wow. days were like Merle. Best. Mm -hmm. Merle also was a sports person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so those days were happy days, almost 10 years. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Beautiful. They are free days. <laughs> Superb days. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. So, I mean, uh, travel is so awesome, right? Because so many of you said childhood and then so many of you also said travel, whether it was travel in your childhood or travel with your children in your middle years or now in your golden, beautiful, free years. Um, I think travel is really something that all of us can unanimously agree makes us happy. So uh, yeah. we thought that, you know, we must do a whole travel segment on Circle of Grace so that we can uh, share those experiences and we can continue to travel together. So on that note, very quickly, um, just going to ask you, so when was the last time you traveled? Last, uh, in April. In April this year. Oh, lovely. I just came Anyone back else? in November from Canada, five and a half months in Canada. Lovely. Wow. <laughs> Anyone I'm still else? in Panama. That's a lot. Oh, nice. You're still in Panama. Wow. <laughs> but it's, it's so beautiful. I think everybody should come to Panama. It's really, really nice. Um, how the place evolved from a volcano. And through the sea, they saw a few rocks, uh, I think 45,000 years back or something. And wow. they're so beautiful, so beautiful. Uh, we live in Panama City because my son works here for the past one year. Um, it's exactly the temperature of Goa. Wow. Oh, it's hot and humid, but it's beautiful and it's so much of fruit all around. The people are lovely. 99.9% .9 are Catholics, so there are lots oh, of churches. Lovely. The churches are packed with people, four masses a day, all packed with wow. people and uh, they have a very good dress sense. Um, they don't allow jeans in church. They don't allow shorts in church. They, oh. they dress very well. Yeah, they dress very well. The choirs are beautiful. Oh my God. The, the seniors take over the church. I was, I'm so impressed and I love to go for mass every day. And they speak school, English? They speak English? Uh, no, 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 in Spanish. Okay. Everything is Spanish. So when my uh, son came here last Jan, he was seconded from Dubai here by his company and he had to learn Spanish. I don't know how he managed because he has to conduct uh, meetings in Spanish and they have conferences in Spanish, but he was just thrown into a well and he 
luckily swam into it and is doing fine. But uh, but I can understand the language only because of Portuguese. Uh, I don't yeah, know if I've taken too much quite time. Similar. Yeah, I think someone else can carry on, otherwise I'll go on and <laughs> on. <laughs> No, but that that inspires us because maybe our next trip should be to Panama. <laughs> yeah, it should be because the then the hat is in Panama hat. Yes, 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 yes. Um, I will use that for carnival. I have a whole uh, outfit from uh, Panama. It's called the Pujera. It's really lovely, and you know the dances here. Everything is so nice. The salsa, just everything. If you come here, it's so important to see the neighboring places like Medellin, Costa Rica, Boquete, uh, Bocas, lots of places. So if anyone's going to Panama for a holiday, please contact me and I'll tell you where to go because lovely places. Oh my gosh. You're the, making us the, yeah, I'm already very excited to just okay, tell my husband, yeah. let's make a next trip to Panama. I think the we absolutely thing, should. The best thing I saw, like, it's the only part in the world that has lights in the water. They take you on a uh, on a night where there is no moon and they take you deep into the sea. If you just put a finger in the water, the whole uh, sea lights up. It's called... Wow. Bioluminous something. If you Google, I'm sure you will yeah. uh, see it. Oh, that's there. But, yeah. So there are three different parts they take you in the sea. So one part they show you, it's like little stars. The next part, it's bigger. But the last part that they took us, my son jumped in and he was fully lit up. <laughs> my fully. goodness. Beautiful. And it is pitch black. Wonderful. And it's so, so beautiful. So he has a light that he just puts in like that on the sea. And the whole thing, it, I've never seen something like that. We couldn't uh, get it on the it. Yeah, yeah. It's an experience that you need to have. Yeah. Very, very beautiful. Another thing that amazed all of us are Medellin. Please tell me if I'm going on <laughs> too long. <laughs> Uh, Medellin is a place that is a must for everyone. They had those favelas, you know, it's favelas like those huts, like in Taravi in Bombay. Uh -huh. Slums. Yeah, the slums. But, like chalets. Slums, 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 mm -hmm. exactly. So mountains of slums. But they converted it all in the past 15 years to be beautiful places and it's a touristic place and everyone has to go there everybody is dancing right from 10 in the morning to next 10 in the morning so it's 24 hours they have music and they have lots of street vendors selling beautiful things and everyone's dressed and you no, just the whole time it's really lovely I think wow. I'm going. But is it the whole dog. time or during carnival? No, no, whole year. Lovely. So how do they earn? Whole year, and you know those slum people are become millionaires because all of them, their houses are there. The government has painted everything into different colors, and I think I'll post some pictures for you all on. Yeah, Saturday. I think. I think definitely, yeah. yeah. Medellin is a must when you come here. It's a short flight. I think it's a 20, 25 minute flight from uh, Panama City. So it's the next city. And then Costa Rica is on the other side. And oh, Bocas is another place where I told you about the water. And the starfish. Oh, the, the starfish beach is so beautiful. But you can't take out the starfish on top of water. Because three minutes and they're gone. They die. So, they yeah, they die. Yeah. So, so, but you're swimming with the starfish all over. Beautiful. That's lovely. Sabrina, I thank you so much because it's like we've almost had a stopover at P Panama. And 
<laughs> and, so that and, was and our it, layoff, and now we're back to uh, yeah. our routing and <laughs> our flight it's takes amazing. off now to Japan. <laughs> Yeah, but I think give her a big hand, everyone, Very because nice. it's really piqued our interest. And uh, I think we're definitely Maria, going we're to definitely doing a Panama. segment on Panama. Yeah, yeah. Since we've had a little dip in the sea and, uh, you know, we've put our feet in there. So yeah. it sounds really exciting. And, and I'm going to get in touch with you <laughs> separately. And we have to see those pictures. So thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> On that note, everybody, the flight is about to move from Panama. We've had a lovely stop over there and head to Japan. So here we go with a little quick tour of Japan. Imagine if ChatGPT and Canva had a baby. Awesome. <laughs> so on that note, I'd like to ask all of you just one word. In one word, can you tell us or can you name anything that comes to mind when you think of Japan? Blossom. Blossoms, okay, lovely. Kimono. <laughs> yourselves. Cherry blossoms. <laughs> Kimono. Cherry blossoms, lovely. Lovely. Sushi. Mm, Sushi, yes. of course. <laughs> Kimono, Maria. Kimono, nice. Matcha tea. Matcha tea, of course. <laughs> Koi pond. What else? Koi, Koi fish pond. Yeah. Koi fish pond. What is that again? Koi, Koi fish pond. Koi fish ponds. Oh, yeah, beautiful. What else? Two Mount more Fuji. Fuji. Tokyo. Tokyo. Mount Fuji. Tokyo. Mount Fuji. Mount Fuji. Mount Fuji. Mount Fuji. Absolutely. Lovely. That's awesome. So you know quite a lot about Japan, but we're going to find out a lot more today and we're going to do it in a super duper fun way. And now I'm going to hand over to Sophia, who's going to teach you um, three beautiful words in Japan, in Japanese. And then she's going to play a really fun game with you. So I hope all of you can see her. Take it away, yes. Sophia. Uh, Maria, are you sharing the screen, the slide? Or... Yes. Okay. So the first word that I'm going to teach you today is definitely how to greet someone, which is with a hello, a simple hello. And we would say that in Japanese. And the word goes like this. It's konnichiwa. Can you all repeat? Konnichiwa. 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 And there is another thing that normally Japanese do. They kind of tend to bend wow. and say hello. Yeah. So they will bow and greet you. So it's definitely konnichiwa. So probably want to repeat that. And let's hear konnichiwa. everyone say that. Konnichiwa. 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 Okay, so I'll also let you all know one more thing. There is going to be a game later on. So Konnichiwa would be hello. So uh, we would be um, doing the bend gesture. Okay, so bow. So there's going to be Konnichiwa and you bow. Okay, so just remember the bow gesture in mind. The next word is Genki Desuka. So Genki Desuka means how are you? Genki. So could you all repeat that? Genki desuka. Genki desuka. So it's no. Genki desuka. Genki desuka. Yeah. Genki desuka. How are you? Genki desuka. How are you? How are you? So basically, how are you? We will have gesture 
uh, thumbs up. So can you remember that? Okay. Yes. Okay. That's how are you? All right. Let's hear it one more time. It's a bit. It's a bit Genki of a desu. tricky one. Genki desu. Huh? Genki desu ka. Genki desu. Genki desu ka. Oh, okay. Sounds good. Very Japanesey. And the hello? next word what is hello? okay. Hello. No, we when we play the game, Maria. <laughs> okay. We have done konnichiwa. Okay. Goodbye. So the last Say word bye. is uh, bye bye. That's um, bye bye. <laughs> it's the same, uh, but uh, internationally everybody associates bye bye. So it's sayonara. 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 Okay. So now we are going to play a little fast game. I'm going to make the gesture and you are going to shout out the words, okay? Without watching the screen now. So. Sayonara. 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 Genki desu Okay. And. Konnichiwa. 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 Oh, that's so nice. It's nice to hear you all picked it up very fast. And I hope you'll remember these words and you can use it in conversations, probably even in India. No, no worries. I'm sure everybody's going to learn something new. So enjoy. It's nice. <laughs> but we are not saying sayonara just yet. Everybody. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we now move on. The generosity of Japan. I mean, isn't it amazing? We, I mean, I asked all of you to tell me anything that you that came to mind when you thought of Japan, and I was quite surprised actually that no one mentioned technology, right? All of us back to our day when we looked at Sony TVs and Fujitsu and Toshiba and Toyota and Honda. I mean. Jap Japan is known for how modern it is and how tech savvy they are. They've given us some of our best possible devices, right? Everyone agrees. Yes, so it's yes. been so generous to us. But you know what is really amazing about Japan as well is that it is one of the most traditional countries. So while it's extremely modern, and has given us the 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 latest in technology. Also, is on. Uh, if everyone can quickly mute, um, Sophia, if you could help me with that and just mute everyone, so you can unmute only when we ask you a question. Yeah, perfect. So, like we said, so it's one of the most traditional countries as well. So it's lovely to see both sides of Japan and to experience you know, both beautiful aspects of Japan. And Japan is so generous because it's given us amazing customs and culture that we can aspire to. It's uh, it's given us some of the most exotic food. It's given us the most famous sport forms, Japanese art, technology we already spoke about, and some beautiful social conventions as well. So. What we thought is before we take you into Japan, it would be really nice to look at some of these things. So first and foremost, did you know that Japan has the world's longest monarchy, hereditary monarchy? Did any of you know that? Nod no. your head or bow. Konnichiwa, if you knew that. Uh, Merle, you'll have to unmute. Uh, yes, Maria, I knew about the monarchy in Japan. Fantastic, yes. Had, so yeah, I had I had read about it in the Japanese novel. I read a oh, lot of nice. novels, so I read about it in the Japanese in the Japanese novel. Lovely. So yes, so they have not only the monarchy, but they also have the world's longest continuous hereditary monarchy. Can anyone name who you see on screen? The emperor and the empress? So it's not Naruhito. the king and queen in Japan, it's the emperor and the empress. Is it Naruhito? That's absolutely right. Emperor Naruhito and Empress Masako. Masako. 
Okay, so that's something new that you've learned about them. Do you also know that the Japanese people have the world's highest lifespan? Isn't that amazing? They have the highest lifespan. Do you know till what their lifespan is? What their average lifespan is? Can anyone guess? 83 years. 100, 100. 83. 183. Yeah, it's 100 around 80. 108. 100. Yeah. It's around 83 years. It's around 80. Yeah, that's right. Oh. So it's, I'm sure there are many who read, uh, who live to be 100, but uh, on average, it's about 80 years. And that's yeah. regardless of gender, because most of the time it's the women who live longer. And it's 10 years longer than the global average simply because they eat so healthy and they don't consume very much red meat. So Oil. seafood, plant foods, soya beans, green tea have all green helped tea. in their lifespan. The country... Also, they have this uh, um, uh, method where they eat till they are almost full. So they never overfill and they just stop just before they reach that limit. So I think that's also one of their yeah. key secrets that actually help to work and, you know, give them... And that's a lovely tip for us too. <laughs> and that is good for us also, exactly. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so we can all be a little <laughs> Japanese in our approach. True, true. Especially <laughs> when you, you enjoy... Is, yeah. Another beautiful thing is their symbol... As you can see, this is what is known as kanji or wa. It is not just a symbol, but it's a cultural way of life. Does anyone know what the wa is or what it means? No. So it's a cultural idea that stems from the concept of harmony. And the Japanese simply believe in balance and harmony and also in conformity. So for them, it's really in, in, important that they conform for peace and unity in their whole community. And it's real, and it's very important for them to put society and other people's needs over their own individual needs and interests. Isn't that beautiful? And that's how they achieve harmony and or wa. Moving forward, of course, Japanese martial arts and traditions, so very famous all over the world. We've been posting a few of these on our Facebook page. Can anyone guess the top five martial arts that Jap uh, Japan Karate, has given us? Budo, tai Chi. Tai no? Chi is not from Japan, but yeah, no. Karate and Judo. Karate, Judo, uh, Sumo Wrestling. Yes. Absolutely. Akihado. Aki, Akido, Akido and Jujitsu. Yeah, Jujitsu. Some beautiful one, forms of martial art. Karate. Yeah, there are actually yeah. many, many, many more. Um, some not as famous or internationally famous as these, but here are some of them. I'm sure you all have heard of judo, karate, sumo wrestling. Yeah. Everyone's yes. heard of that. But I yes. didn't hear it when I said, uh, when I asked for words from Japan, <laughs> suggest to. <laughs> or another amazing fact about uh, Japan is that they, the Japanese might be the hardest working people in the world. Did you know that? Yeah. They are it's so hardworking. And their dedication to their job is so emphasized that can you believe 53% uh, of the Japanese are unaware of how much annual leave they are entitled to? The rest Opposite of us, of that's the first thing we check. <laughs> After you know your salary, the first thing you check is how much leave you have. <laughs> Whereas <laughs> almost half of them don't even know how much leave they are entitled to. They even tend to feel extremely guilty for taking, you know, paid breaks, and stuff like that. They feel like it's their duty to work. They it, It's embodied in their whole uh, ethic. And only 52% of them believe in a work-life balance. So it's safe to say they're workaholics. Maybe not something we want to borrow, right? Maybe something we can teach them. <laughs> <laughs> Another beautiful thing is Omotenashi. It's deeply, deeply embedded in their culture. 
And as the picture suggests, and That's Supiya nice. earlier uh, brought that out when she told you, even as they say hello, they bow down in such a beautiful gesture of service. So Omotenashi is deeply ingrained in their culture and it's you see it in the service industry all the time because what they what they want to do is they want to say that they will serve you wholeheartedly and it's almost like selfless service. So they pay absolute attention to every small detail so much so that they go over and beyond to even anticipate other people's needs and satisfy them beyond their own personal uh, interest or their own, even sacrificing their own personal pleasure to serve you. So Umute Nashi, again, selfless service. Beautiful, right? And now something very interesting as well. Did you know that the Japanese are some of the most fashionable people in the world. If you go, go to Tokyo, you'll see the latest trends there and they follow all kinds of fashion. Bowing, as we just said, is a form of their greeting. And did you also know that in Japan, you don't tip, unlike anywhere else in the world, because like I said, it's a combination of omotenashi because they believe that serving is their duty. So if you uh, tip them, they may awkwardly ask you to take it back. <laughs> mm -hmm. Isn't that an interesting <laughs> thing? Oh it's interesting, yeah. In fact, even Singapore does that um, because I remember the first time I visited and uh, we uh, traditionally just leave a tip and um, the, the server actually came rushing with the tip back to us and asked us to take it. And we were like a bit um, taken aback. Back. But uh, then we were like, um, they were like, no, no, no. And, no. and uh, that's when we realized that, okay, there's no tipping. And uh, it's, it's generally uh, taken as a little offense. So we have to be mindful and things like that. So it's, it's something that even the Japanese are very, very particular about. And uh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's uh, Maria, really quite unique Maria, to them. Maria, the very fact that they bow low, you know, even in any sport, table tennis, you see them playing badminton, table tennis, you see them on the court, always they will bow before their game starts yes. and bow and thank the crowd after the game is over. Anywhere. In Absolutely. fact, they even bow I get to, towards the opponent, right? So it's yes, like yes, after yes. they've got punched yeah. or hit and then there's another bow. So it's it's yeah. really... <laughs> it's really beautiful. I mean, to see how wholehearted they are and, and they've embodied that spirit of service to others and respect for others. And that's why the Japanese people are known to be very, very uh, mild, very kind, very soft, you know? And I think it's such a beautiful embodiment of Utenashu. On yeah. that note, we'd now like to take you to the top five cities you must visit in Japan. So here we go. Thank you. Fasten your seatbelts, everyone, as we head out. Wow. Hey there, fellow adventurers. Welcome back to our channel, where we embark on thrilling journeys around the globe. Today, we're setting our sights on the captivating land of the rising sun, Japan. Get ready to immerse yourself in a world where ancient traditions harmoniously coexist with futuristic innovation. In this video, we'll be unveiling the top five cities in Japan that you absolutely cannot miss. Number one, Tokyo. Tokyo is a city where ancient traditions seamlessly blend with cutting edge technology, creating an electrifying atmosphere that can be felt in every corner. The first thing that strikes you is the towering skyscrapers that dominate the skyline symbolizing Japan's rapid growth and innovation. The streets of Tokyo are an absolute spectacle, bustling with a relentless energy. Take a stroll through the vibrant neighborhoods like Shibuya, Shinjuku, and Harajuku, and immerse yourself in the vibrant street fashion, eclectic shops, and quirky cafes. Amidst the urban chaos, Tokyo also offers serene pockets of tranquility, the city is adorned with beautiful parks and gardens, such as the serene Shinjuku Gyoen and the historic Hamarikyu Gardens. 
These green oases provide a much-needed respite from the city's fast pace, allowing visitors to relax and appreciate the beauty. Number 2. Kyoto Kyoto is known for its countless temples, shrines, and traditional wooden machia houses that line its picturesque streets. Let's start our exploration with one of the most iconic sites, the stunning Kinkaku-ji Temple, also known as the Golden Pavilion. No visit to Kyoto is complete without a visit to the mesmerizing Fushimi Inari Shrine. This sacred site is famous for its seemingly endless rows of vibrant red torii gates, forming a mystical pathway that leads up to the sacred Mount Inari. Take your time to wander through this spiritual oasis and soak in the tranquil ambience. Lastly, Kyoto is a city that embraces the changing seasons, offering breathtaking landscapes throughout the year. Witness the vibrant hues of cherry blossoms in spring, the lush greenery of summer, and the fiery colors of autumn that paint the city in a mesmerizing palette. Number 3. Hiroshima Our journey begins in Hiroshima Peace Memorial Park, a place of remembrance and reflection. This park stands as a testament to the strength and determination of the Hiroshima community. At the heart of Hiroshima lies the Hiroshima Peace Memorial Park, a solemn and serene space dedicated to honoring the victims and promoting a world free of nuclear weapons. The iconic atomic bomb dome stands as a powerful reminder of the city's resilience and its unwavering commitment to peace. Amidst the city's powerful history, Hiroshima also offers moments of tranquility and natural beauty. Shukayan Garden is a hidden gem, a meticulously designed Japanese garden that invites visitors to wander through its paths, admire the delicate landscapes, and find solace amidst the serene ponds, bridges, and traditional tea houses. Number 4. Kanazawa Kanazawa, often overlooked by tourists, is a city rich in history, culture, and natural beauty. Let's dive into its wonders together. Wander through the reconstructed castle and immerse yourself in the intriguing tales of samurai warriors and noble lords. Just adjacent to Kanazawa Castle lies the exquisite Kenrokuen Garden, considered one of Japan's three most beautiful landscape gardens. Immerse yourself in the tranquility of its meticulously manicured landscapes, scenic ponds, and winding paths. Kenrokuen showcases the changing seasons with its cherry blossoms in spring, lush greenery in summer, vibrant foliage in autumn, and serene snowscapes in winter. Number 5. Nara Welcome to the enchanting city of Nara, where history comes alive and gentle deer roam freely. Todaiji Temple, home to the Great Buddha, is a must-visit destination in Nara. Step inside the colossal wooden structure and be in awe of the world's largest bronze Buddha statue as you stand before this majestic master pie. As you stand before this majestic masterpiece, you'll feel a sense of reverence and appreciate the architectural marvel that has stood for centuries. Nara Park nestled in the heart of the city, is a haven where nature and history coexist harmoniously. The park is famous for its friendly and sacred deer regarded as messengers of the gods. These gentle creatures roam freely, and visitors have the opportunity to interact with them, feed them special deer crackers, and even capture unforgettable moments with these beautiful animals. That was all from us, folks. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe to see more. See you soon. Awesome, everyone. Yeah, over to you, Sophia. I share my screen. Hold on. Let me... We hope you enjoyed that little snippet. Uh, can you tell us what the five top five cities were? Yeah, Tokyo, Tokyo Kyoto, Kyoto, Hiroshima, Hiroshima Kamazawa, Kamazawa, and Nara. Nara. Yes, absolutely. Wow, you all definitely were paying attention. Uh, Sophia, I can share my screen because I think some of the answers are being given out. So, okay, if you can stop sharing. Okay, so on that note, you can uh, quickly, I think, let everyone know what's coming next. So we're going to play, have a little a quiz, and uh, we're going to start with a few questions. So, can anybody tell us? Uh, What's a Japanese name for cherry blossoms? Sakura. Yay, that was fast. Well, good, very good. Okay. Um, next question. Oh, Maria. Okay. 
So, what's the most populated city in Japan? Tokyo. Tokyo. Ooh, that's good. That was also fast. What's the Japanese sport that features men in what looks like adult diapers? Sumo wrestling. Sumo, sumo wrestling. <laughs> Very easy, I'm guessing. So I should have made them a little tough, but okay, we'll get there. Um, the art of paper folding is known as what? Origami. Origami. Ooh, good, good. What's the highest mountain in Japan, which is also oh, a volcano? Mount Fuji. Fuji. Okay. Hiroshima. In Hiroshima. <laughs> okay, we're going to get into a little toughies now, okay? What is the name for the military nobel nobility and officer caste that existed in the medieval and early modern Japan? They are, they are called, I think, uh, samurais. Ooh, who, who got that? I don't Me, see. Mal. Mal. Oh, okay. <laughs> good, good, good. Okay. And we have another one here. Okay, what is the four-letter word for the paste made from fermented soybean, barley, or rice malt, which is miso. commonly used in Japanese cooking. Yeah. Miso. Oh, miso. okay. Miso. <laughs> you got miso all of them. That's, that's great. Yeah. That's famous and, miso soup. Yes, that's right. And what is the biggest thing in Japan that happens in March? Cherry blossoms. Oh, yes, they're all in bloom. Okay. It Absolutely. looks beautiful. That picture is beautiful to paint. True. I wish I could paint it. True. Yeah, you can and you should. Absolutely. I think give yourselves a big hand. You all have definitely yeah, you got uh, all them right. That you know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Now let's let's see if you can guess by the picture. Can all of you see the screen? Yeah. Oh. Okay, so here goes. What is this art form called? Which has originated in Japan? Origami? No. No. Tick, tick one. Tick, tick two. Tick, A tick. clue. It starts with the letter A. Yeah. And it's all the rage today. All your, if you have grandchildren, Grandkids, yeah. yeah, they would all be loving this kind of art. It's called oh, anime. Yes. Anime. Um, Correct. Yes. We are so the next that time... group now. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if, as they grow, if they, you know, you can talk to them about anime and you'll be the cr cool grandparent. <laughs> but what is it? What is it actually? It's basically it's a drawing which, uh, yeah. It's, this is the style. As you can see, all, you know, the big eyes, uh, the this kind of uh, this uh, the penciling that is done. I think Sophia, you can explain it even better. Yeah, so it's basically um, they they're characters that uh, they they give them special um, looks where yes. you have yes. um, you know they're like mythical creatures but in human form. So it's very um, it's a very um, um, how mystical. Would you say? Yeah, it's very mystical. They're like the cat ears. And in fact, no, my daughter example, does a lot of this drawing. Suppose they wanted to draw me, suppose they yeah. wanted to draw me, they could just make eyes, big eyes or something yeah. like that. It is different from caricatures. So this is basically okay. giving you a, a kind of a, an avatar, you know? So they would probably take your traits and put it into the drawing and then give okay, it, okay. give you a feel. Yeah. yeah. Somewhat like a caricature, but not yes. exactly that. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Okay. But it's this kind of coloring, you know. So whenever yeah. you see you, it's very recognizable. So whenever you see art in this form, there are cartoons, there are apps now. There, it's it's on T-shirts. You'll you'll start to notice and recognize, and now you'll know that just as easily as you recognize the other things, you will hopefully recognize this as being anime, which originated yeah. in Japan. Okay. On that note, what kind of art form is this? Origami. Origami, right? Absolutely. But look, right. at the, look at the complex work that they've done. So we know origami as being very simple, right? Just look at the complexity in how they take it even more ahead of what we know. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Who do you think this is? 
Absolutely. So you guessed samurai earlier. The you know the medieval warrior, but this yeah. is what he looked like. Yeah. What is Whoa. this? This is sushi. This is I'm sushi sure everyone's sushi. mouth is watering. <laughs> sushi. <laughs> sushi. Yeah. Sushi. I don't no, like it's it. not sushi. Sashimi. Yes, again. I love it. Sashimi. Sashimi. That's sashimi. right. <laughs> and it is. You're right. Sushi. The difference between sushi and sashimi is sushi has a little bit of rice. It's rolled in your um in your wrappers, whereas here. In seaweed wrappers, whereas here it's it's in it, it's in its purest form and it's raw food. And one might think that, oh, eeks or yikes or whatever. But because sashimi has to be so fresh because it's raw and it's completely unpolluted with any other artificial flavor, it's extremely healthy. And it's also quite and delicious. It is so had, if you're it is had with, enough, with the, It is had with the wasabi sauce. Yes, you see it it's in that green soy leaf. sauce. Yeah. Yeah, and soy sauce. It so if you you're run. adventurous enough, next time you go out for dinner, do try sashimi and maybe oh. try salmon. We can see yeah, yeah. tuna salmon here and a little bit of prawn, yeah. and that is a crab on the left crab stick. And the one yeah. in the back here in orange is uh salmon. Mm. Yeah. Okay. What is this? Dumpling. Uh -huh. A form of dumpling, yes. But in Japan, they call them? Koisa. So don't give out the answer yet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Those are my favorite. <laughs> yeah, gyoza. It's actually yeah. savory. Yeah. So it's not, it's, it's stuffed with, it's like dumplings. It's just Japanese dumplings and it's normally stuffed with uh, prawn or chicken or beef mm. mince or crab so it's really delicious and this time it is cooked you either get them steamed or fried <laughs> so if what's you're it that, called what's gyoza. it called gyoza gyoza yes it's sophia and my favorite <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay, because very crispy. Now, who's this we spoke about the samurais but Who's this? Geisha, Geisha. Geisha, Geisha girls. Yeah, absolutely. Geisha, Geisha you'd have heard of Geisha girls. And yeah. Yeah. does anyone know what, who Geishas are? Uh, they are basically uh, those girls that dance and all that. I can't remember exactly what else they do. But they oh, are dressed yeah, up. They are, and... You're right. They do like those dancers. They are entertainers. So they are traditional yeah. Japanese entertainers. What is this? It's a very traditional part of Japan. Massage. This is the tea. Not massage. Serving mm -hmm. tea. 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 Absolutely. It's a traditional tea ceremony. Tea ceremony. Green tea. Yeah. Yes. And, and there's a whole method to this, the way they do it. And it's meant to, again, be a very spiritual experience because yeah. it's done in the most beautiful way where they serve you tea in, you know, uh, they, they mix up your tea, then they very gently uh, heat up your the water. And it's a whole beautiful ceremony, um, yeah. which is an experience of its kind, you know. There is a method to making the tea as well. So it's initially, they, it's not like the traditional way we would normally make tea, where you boil in the tea leaves. Masala but chai. here, it's basically warm water, that is um, that tea leaves are dropped in and they let it simmer for a bit and they actually don't have that first portion it's actually thrown out and then the second part where the, the tea actually sits for a bit longer it it kind of gets mellowed and then that is what is poured in so you're not having the first batch of the tea that it's a second batch and there are many many things that go beyond that actually that's very interesting next Should time you might want to mm -hmm. try and experience the traditional uh, Japanese tea ceremony. Ceremony. Um, you mentioned this earlier, but can you recognize kimono. what they're wearing? Kimono, kimono. 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 Yes, kimono. yes, absolutely. 
So a little harder than the previous quiz, but we wanted you to get warmed up a little bit of what you know and a little bit of what you, you know now. So yes. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> On that note, um, very quickly, you know, uh, Sophia and myself, we were talking and we said, okay, fine, now that you've been on a visit to Japan, you know, you've learned so many things, you've refreshed so many things, because like we said, when we started out and we asked you to throw out a few words that uh, that you could think of that were associated with Japan, well, there are not that many words that came out, <laughs> but I'm sure there'll be plenty more now, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so on that note, we decided to call the genie and we said, okay, if we call the Japanese genie and ask him uh, to grant you a wish, a wish for each slide, do tell us which one you would wish for. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's ask everyone, let's rub that Japanese oil lamp and the genie is here. So if we ask, you, ask the genie to bring you a kimono, a plate of sashimi or a glass of sake, which is Japanese wine. Right. What would you ask for? Sashimi. Sashimi? Sashimi, sashimi. sashimi. Yes. okay, lovely. I think the kimono. A kimono, how lovely. So a little bit of all then. <laughs> yes. Very nice. Okay. If you could ask the Japanese genie to take you to Tokyo, Kyoto or Hiroshima? Tokyo. Tokyo. Yeah, actually, Tokyo is one of the best places. The capital. So, Tokyo, everybody? Tokyo. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Tokyo. Oh, that's the most interesting for you. Lovely. If you could ask the Japanese genie to speak, to teach you to speak Japanese, to teach you karate, or to teach you origami, what would you choose? Origami. To speak Japanese. To learn Japanese. To speak Japanese. Interesting. To speak Japanese. I would love to learn or origami. Origami. Okay, lovely. What is karate? No. <laughs> you have to have a body for that. Yeah, now the bones are not. You are too old for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but the genie could still grant your wish. <laughs> <laughs> okay, lovely. So Japanese and origami. And now for the next one. If you could go to Japan, China, or Hong Kong, what would you choose? Japan. 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 I've, I've been to China and Hong Kong, so Japan. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Lovely. All of you. Okay, so all those who are really interested in going to Japan, do let us know. Send us a WhatsApp message and we'll we can put you in touch with people who can like, you know, with a, a travel agency who can possibly take you to Japan. All right. So if you're really interested in traveling, do send us a message and let us know. Okay. Why not go as and a the, group? That group? could also happen. That could also happen if that's something that you want to do. So the genie is here to make your wish come true. So do give it a thought and get back to us. Okay. Okay. Thank yes. You. On on that note, I want to share. Can, does anyone remember what this symbol is? Oh. <gasps> Silence. <laughs> Learning. No. What is this called? I I I showed it to you earlier. What's it called? Okay. Mm -hmm. Can anyone tell me what it means? It's kanji or something. Kanji, yeah, correct. Yeah. Also kanji. known as yeah. harmony. Uh, kanji, yes. wow, 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 and it means uh, harmony. Uh, <laughs> that's right. That's right. So, on that note, let me very quickly show you how you all got your pens and your papers. Yeah. So we're going yeah. to learn how to write this word. Okay. So let me quickly share my screen so that you all can can all of you see my screen. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so let's quickly see how to write this. Okay, so you can also try. Straight line, one like a T it is. My gosh, it's so difficult. Hey. 
<laughs> like the herring bone stitch. <laughs> Yo, Maria. Done? Yeah. yeah. For all those who are still doing, let's give them another moment. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, done. Beautiful. Okay, so now let's all hold up. I, I, if I can ask you all to hold up your uh, your sheets and show it to us. All those who are not on video, if you can put your video on, and I'd love to take a screenshot of you. Oh, actually mine is very writing. small. Beautiful. It's tiny. Oh, oh that's, that's fine. Nice. Oh, lovely. All of you have written it so well. Can't see anything but for mine. Beautiful. Yes. Your own little wow. So uh, what I would ask you to do as your Japanese homework <laughs> is take out that beautiful brush that you have and take some lovely black paint, take a nice A4 sheet and draw this out. You now have a reference on your own paper. You know what how to write it and draw that out and frame it and put it in a nice space which can remind you every day of this beautiful concept of balance and harmony within you. And so we can take a little bit of Japan into our everyday lives. Okay. Everyone's all set to do that. Give us yeah, a yeah. quick. So yeah. Is the square harmony or is the square balance? No, the whole, the whole, the whole thing word. together is okay. harmony balance and balance. And harmony. Okay. Yeah. That's what it, that's what it means together. Okay. On that note, we'll, we, we, we're we almost done, but I'm going to go back to Sophia as she t she tests you all on those three lovely words that you all would have learned. So, <laughs> Sophia, let's do the symbols again. That's Kochinawa. Konichiwa. Konichiwa. Yes, very good. Sayonara. Well done. Thank you, Dr. So, can you can you right, that's right. Thank you, Deska. And sayonara. 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 It, it was well a Hindi done. song, right? Well so done, done, everybody. Hindi song. Yeah, there's a Hindi song as well, I think. Uh, sayonara. Love in Tokyo or something yes, like that. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Yes, 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 absolutely. Also, and there's also, also in the, in the, in the, in the Hindi picture. In the Hindi picture, it was done recently. Zindagi na na milenga dubara. Yeah, so much of uh, Japanese thing in it. Oh yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay, no, did, did, did. that's a lovely Absolutely. movie also. Lovely. I watched it eleven <laughs> times. Wow. Oh my I gosh! Wow, I loved it. <laughs> I just love that movie. Nice. It's a nice movie. Very nice movie. Yes, yes. that's lovely. So on that note, everybody, I think we can all say sayonara. 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 I hope you all enjoyed and uh, thank you. For thank you so much. You, thank you. you have to say konnichiwa for your oh. next workshop. That's why we're winding up because it's it's sayonara here, but konnichiwa for the Easter art and craft workshop. Okay. <laughs> okay. Bye. 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 And uh, you never told us how to say thank you to both of you. Arigato. 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 So Arigato, Sophia, and Maria. You're welcome. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you enjoyed that. And on that note, Arigato to all of you too. Arigato. Arigato. Sayonara. Sayonara. Bye -bye. Sayonara. I'll, I'll be sharing the, the the link to get into the Easter workshop, okay? So for those who are joining that, please feel free to go.